was a free bird sailing through the black and starry sky. I was a reverie. Onto the wide open spaces where a mind can be a mind without a memory. Now you see. We are part of a bigger and older world than people imagine, and science agrees with much of what we already know. This is all boreal for us now, but at the time that people would have occupied this area, it would have been uh, the mammoth steppe tundra, so grasslands, and there would have been a large lake here for a couple of thousand years, uh, Glacial Lake Old Crow. 25,000 years ago. You could have walked from here all the way across um, Alaska, across the Bering Strait, across kind of Siberia, Mongolia, all the way to kind of northern, kind of northern Scandinavia almost. There would have been glaciers there at that point. That's where it kind of ended. I would look at landscapes on a big scale and, uh, and, and understand how climate affected the landscape and how that climate affected populations of animals, plants, because people couldn't have survived here if there wasn't food. It's proven difficult to do. But here at Bluefish Caves, some of the very earliest and some of the most convincing evidence to, uh, of the earliest peoples has come to light, perhaps as early as 23 or 24,000 years ago. The really unfortunate thing is uh, the early dates on bluefish caves, so that sort of, you know, 22, 23,000 years ago, um, was highly controversial. And, and a lot of people, you know, didn't accept it until hopefully now. Basically any kind of analysis that, that can be done with the sediments at the site here, uh, they are doing. And so far, it's really just corroborating um, all the solid work that they did back in the 70s and 80s. That's just proving it out. We've got such great data now that... Uh, it really sort of proves out the story of bluefish caves. Sort of put those questions to bed. So they got to this one after caves one and two. Um, and the unique thing about cave three is that it has not been fully excavated. So you can see the area that was dug out here and then this other portion of the cave, this is still intact sediment. This is just some of the overburden here, but you can see the Holocene sediment as the dark colored soil. And then once you get down here, this is all the Pleistocene lust soil. This, and you can see megafauna bone right there. Um, and there's actually another one right here covered up with that tone. A plastic and there's a force mandible right here that's also covered in plastic well, just to protect it. Um, so these were actually exposed um, when we came here in 2019 so those our first visit to the site with the University of Kansas crew and they were interested in doing some of the sedimentary DNA sampling and because caves one and two had been completely excavated uh, we came here to cave three so that they could take some samples uh, and they just removed 10 centimeter strip of soil just along this edge right here um, and took their their samples um, but it's a really good example of you know why not to fully excavate sites like cave one and cave two yeah. because you know 40 years ago nobody was thinking about sedimentary dna and look at all the great uh, information that we're gathering now and if we had those sediments in caves one and two, like there's a lot of really great data that we would have been able to get out of it that we just can't get now. So cave three is a good example of, of you know, why we want to leave that behind for the future. Things would change constantly. The land changes, the river changes, 
Your food source changes because of how the environment changes. Like it's migration patterns change. Certain animals were found, they're usually in relatively the same area, but natural disasters, different events, like it'll change it. They just go where the food is, just like humans would, right? Things would change. Bison move over from Asia into North America, but bison did go back over into Asia from North America. And so this is where things like uh, looking at population genetics really comes into play uh, when things get isolated and how they change in different species. There's increasing evidence that peoples were here earlier than 20,000 years. A few people, not a lot of people perhaps, but some peoples arrived long before Clovis arrived. As we know today, Clovis really dates to about 13,000 years ago. And the idea took hold that the Clovis peoples were the first to come through. And the idea was that they couldn't have possibly, no one could have arrived prior to that. There was a huge diversity of uh, animals, mammals and birds during the Pleistocene. Among the animals that I identified at Bluefish Caves, there's the woolly mammoth, Yukon horse, steppe bison, caribou, moose, wapiti, doll sheep, uh, some carnivores, wolves, uh, bear and steppe lion, fox, uh, and then birds, lots, lots of ptarmigans, some ducks and no geese as well this Beringia ecosystem would have not been quite as harsh as we often think the North was at those times. And so um, it would have been a little bit drier uh, in some spots, a little bit wetter in others. So people would have been able to kind of adapt. It was a much, much more productive ecosystem than it is today. So once you hit the Holocene, once we start to get kind of the boreal forest coming up and these hummocks forming and kind of sedges, you lose a lot of biodiversity and animals can't eat that stuff. So you get the loss of mammoths and horses and bison, kind of the only things that survive large mammal-wise are, are things like bears and caribou. With the people, like I think people were here a lot, even longer than 30,000 years ago, you know? Um, but they haven't proved that yet. <laughs> So there, there's not a lot of cut marks on the bones, there's not a lot of stone artifacts at the caves, which is why I think people were not living directly in this area, but they were using uh, the caves to, to hunt and process carcasses, to collect the meat, uh, maybe the marrow as well, and, and then they would leave to a camp that was located elsewhere. We can say that humans have been at Bluefish Caves and have used Bluefish Caves, the length of occupation and the earliest time that they were here is kind of what we're investigating. I believe through my ancestors being here, uh, it's, uh, their migration, I mean, they travel because of the food, the, the season, and the caves that provide shelter most likely, and, and now in the caves they're looking for bones, that, that impacts our history. I'm just glad to be part of it. One day I, uh, I brought those facts to a community member saying I, I analyzed the, the faunal material from Bluefish Caves, I dated some of the butchered bones and, and I I think that people were there 23,000 years ago. And he told me, yeah, I know that already. 